So what are the tests of ovulation? How do we know whether this lady or this girl is ovulating or not? Hi, so let's discuss the tests of ovulation. So when a patient comes to us who is subfertile, one of the preliminary tests we do is to check for ovulatory function, whether she is ovulating or not. So a patient who is infertile comes to us, we have several things to check. We have to check the uterus, we have to check the tubes, the patency of the tubes and we have to check the ovaries, whether she is ovulating or not. So in this session, we will be discussing tests for ovulation. Now, ovulatory dysfunction is, the, is a common cause of infertility. In fact, 30 to 40% of all cases of female infertility and remember female infertility accounts for 40% of all cases of infertility out of which ovulatory dysfunction accounts for another 40%. So it's a huge chunk and an ovulation that is oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea is the common presentation. If a woman is not ovulating, she will present with periods of amenorrhea or periods of oligomenorrhea. And one of the most common causes is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So also remember, it's a very treatable cause of infertility also because we can give ovulation induction or inducing agents and treat the infertility and make her or cause her to ovulate. So what are the tests of ovulation? So first things first is we always take a history. What tells us that she is having regular cycles? It, uh, ovulating is if she has regular cycles. So regularity of the menstrual cycle, a 21 to 35 day regular cycle if she is having, that means she is ovulating. It gives us indirect evidence that yes, she most likely is ovulating. Also if she has middle shimmers, what is middle shimmers? During ovulation, some women have slight spotting or have pain on one side, whichever side the ovary, whichever ovary is ovulating, that side she will have a sharp stabbing pain. It is very common in many women and this is called as Mittelschmerz. Dysmenorrhea, when she has pain during periods is again indirectly a sign that she has an ovulatory cycle. Women who have an ovulation or oligoovulation do usually do not have a lot of dysmenorrhea. They have they will have periods every three four months, but not associated with abdominal pain. Premenstrual syndromes, a, a PMS, this is usually because of the progesterone component in the luteal phase. She may have bloating, she may have headaches, she may have mood disturbances. These are all uh, symptoms of premenstrual syndrome and are again indicative of a luteal phase. That means ovulation has happened. So, these, so based on history, we get a very good idea whether the patient is ovulating or not, but we can do further tests if we are doubtful and we can ask the patient to keep a basal body temperature. Now for this specialized uh, thermometers come which are have finer uh, lesser calibrations and it has been found that the basal body temperature of just before ovulation it falls by 0.25 degrees Celsius and then rises by 0.5 up to by 0.5 degrees celsius and this happens because of the rise in progesterone post ovulation so it is an uh, inexpensive test to do the woman can do it herself keep a chart check whether she's ovulating but of course it's cumbersome she has to check her temperature daily and not very accurate also it is a retrospective diagnosis you can't tell beforehand that that she is going to ovulate now and then advise her intercourse no you can only tell after ovulation has happened when the temperature rises Another test which the woman can do herself is a cervical mucus test. So it has been found that at the time of ovulation, the cervical mucus is thin and profuse. And what happens at the time of ovulation, it becomes what is called a spin bar kit like. It is stretchable at the time of ovulation and it becomes resembles the raw egg white, it becomes stretchable and elastic. And afterwards, it becomes a tenacious, viscous and easily breaks post ovulation. So again, this is a sign, the spin formation of spin bar kit is a sign that she is ovulating. And also if you put this mucus, uh, cervical mucus under a microscope, you will see a characteristic ferning pattern observed in the proliferative phase and in the mid cycle phase. So now based on history and based on these simple tests, you can uh, more or less tell whether she is having ovulatory cycles or not. But for confirmatory proof, we can do hormonal studies and which hormonal study is the best one to do is mid level rise of progesterone so if she's ovulated in the luteal phase progesterone will be high and when do we check on day 21 this progesterone level peaks it should be more than 10 nanogram per ml on day 20 
one of her cycle. We can also check with urinary LH. The urinary LH will the LH surge occurs 24 hours before ovulation, and then urinary LH will appear. So these are again tests, especially the mid luteal progesterone, which peaks on day 21, is uh, quite significant. It tells us whether ovulation has happened, whether the woman is ovulating. We can also do an endometrial biopsy and this is done in the pre-menstrual phase. A secretory endometrium will confirm that yes, this woman has ovulated. So if it is a proliferative endometrium done pre-menstrually, then that means she's had an anovular cycle. If ovulation has happened, subnucleolar vacu vacuolation will be seen. And if sometimes the endometrial biopsy shows a lag of two to three days than her actual date, say we do the uh, endometrial biopsy on day 25, but the endometrial biopsy shows a picture of a say a tw day 21 endometrium. There's a lag, this could mean there is corpus luteal deficiency that means lack of progesterone and hence the lag in the endometrium so this is how a early proliferative phase endometrium looks like this is how late proliferative endometrium looks like you can see the glands here are, are getting more elongated but in the secretory phase the gl glands are, are typically serrated and tubular and long and this is how the secretory phase endometrium appears as and another good way to check whether ovulation has happened is by doing follicular imaging. Number one, by basically by doing an ultrasound, a transgenital ultrasound, where we can see the follicle actually growing in size, and we can also see the endometrium changing in appearance. So you see these three ultrasounds. This is an ultrasound of immediate post menstrual phase. She's just had a period, and you can see the central endometrial lining and a faint trilaminar appearance which now becomes very clear. This is the typical trilaminar endometrium seen in the proliferative phase. In the secretory phase what happens once she has ovulated, you can see the endometrium here now, this is more homogeneous. Okay, so homogeneous that is of the same consistency throughout a homogeneous endometrium is suggestive of a secretory phase that means luteal phase that means she has ovulated if she hasn't ovulated you will continue seeing the trilaminar endometrium which happens because of constant estrogen stimulation another thing you can see on the ultrasound is the presence of the growing ovarian follicle which is called as follicular imaging and you can actually see it appearing then rupturing and then forming the corpus luteum so this is another way by which we can check ovulation and of course an indirect way nobody really does this but by chance if you're doing a laparoscopy for a patient who is mid cycle you can actually see the follicle appearing and about to rupture so this is the ovary and you can see here a beautiful follicle which is appearing and will eventually rupture in a few hours time so this is direct proof that ovulation is happening so let's recap what are the tests for ovulation the tests for ovulation are based on history regularity of her menstrual cycle the presence of mittelschmerz dysmenorrhea and premenstrual syndrome are all indicators that she is ovulating based on her basal body temperature post ovulation the temperature will rise by 0.5 degrees celsius this will also tell you cervical mucus becomes stretchy like raw egg white at the time of ovulation which is called a spin bar kit this will also tell you that she has ovulated hormonal studies day 21 progesterone increases it is maximum on day 21 more than 10 nanograms per ml is indirect evidence that she has ovulated histopathology of the endometrium if you do a biopsy premenstrually you should get a secretory endometrium and on laparoscopy you can actually see the uh, ovulation happening and of course we missed out the ultrasound the ultrasound we can both see the endometrium and the follicle forming so this is called as follicular imaging on ultrasound so these are some tests which help us determine if ovulation is happening let's do an mcq which of the following is not a test of ovulation amh basal body temperature serum progesterone and urinary lh and this is the correct answer. So remember, anti-mullerian hormone is AMH. This is a test of ovarian 
reserve okay not of ovulation this is very important to understand a test of ovarian reserve means how many follicles are remaining in the ovary we all know as age progresses the number of follicles reduce so an ovarian reserve is important to know if a woman is it has a low amh that means her ovarian reserve is poor whereas a woman who has high amh is seen in pcos so low amh is seen in women who have a poor ovarian reserve and usually more than 35 years the age is more they have a poor ovarian reserve a high amh is seen in women who have lot of follicles so those women like pcos so this is how we check for ovarian reserve we can also check ovarian reserve by the patient's age a young woman should have a good ovarian reserve we can also check the ovarian reserve by doing what is called an antral follicle count on the ultrasound that is we count the number of follicles that are seen on the ultrasound on both the sides of the ovaries and that can also tell us how good the ovarian reserve is dokumi we teach the way you like to learn